Hey everyone, this is Sasha bringing you a video tutorial today from bp for You. If you have not yet watched part one of the um, editing modes here, then you want to go ahead and you want to watch part one so that you can get an idea of how this quick mode works before moving on to this part two. So we went ahead and we went over all of this stuff in quick mode. Now we have this other mode here called guided mode. Now guided mode goes through and it's great if you are a beginner. So if you are just pulling into Adobe Photoshop Elements and you are a little bit confused, this is exactly where you want to be. So anything that we click here is going to give you the description or the title of what it is, a description of how to use it, you can go through here and you can select some options, um, the photo ratio. For example, we're using the crop tool here. We can do the photo ratio. Um, we can choose um, what size that we might want our photo to be. We've got, you know, the five by seven here or the very popular eight by 10. Um, we can do rule of thirds, we can do a grid, or the golden ratio, which here you would have um, the triangle and some different um, overlays that you could use to make your, um, you could give your photo a unique composition with. So let's go ahead here. I don't want to crop my photos, so we can just press cancel on that. If you were happy with your crop, you could press done. So if you wanted to straighten your photo or rotate your photo, you could click here. And so this is giving you the option of what um, tools that you want to use. We can rotate our photo up here, and again, it gives you directions. Click on an icon below to rotate the image left or right. So if I wanted to rotate my image left, I would click here, and to rotate it right, I click here. And this would be my straighten tool. To straighten it, I would click the straighten tool below, then draw a line on your photo. The image will rotate to the angle of the line. And so if I pulled my line here, then my photo would straighten to that line. Um, you can decide to maintain your image size or maintain your canvas size, one of the two. And the image could be cropped to fit within the canvas and to reset it you just click on this reset button and then you can press done or cancel. Next we have sharpen photo. Again here we can just like in the quick mode we can auto sharpen or we can use the slider to decide how much sharpening that you can manually apply to your photo. So you can go ahead and um, View this at 100% and it says here that you can avoid over sharpening many images. Sharpen best when viewed at 100%. Press Control Alt 0 to zoom to 100%. So not only does it give you the options to go ahead and do this, but it gives you some keyboard shortcuts and some tips as well. Next we have a guide for editing a photo in under advanced edits. So here again we have our crop tool. We can do a recompose, which we will talk about in a later video. We can decide to um, lighten or darken a photo here. We can lighten our shadows, which affects only the dark areas. We can darken our highlights, or we can add some mid-tone contrast or pull that away. So let's press cancel. And I am going to go up here to edit and revert to get my crop back. If you ever decide that you totally hate everything that you've done to your photo, edit and revert is the, definitely the option for you. That will take you back to the beginning when you first opened your photo up into Elements. So here we have touch up scratches and blemishes. So again, it gives us um, some instructions on how to use the tool for each one of these tools. So here we can click here to activate the spot healing brush, which we have up here. And you can use the slider to address 
to adjust the brush size and use the brush that's a bit larger than the flaw that you're fixing. This girl really doesn't have any flaws. But to show you, we could, gosh, okay, let's get rid of her little bump on her wrist. So you can just kind of click on that and that would smooth that out. This is great for pimples. Um, and then this is our healing brush and you can use the slider to adjust the brush size. And then to use this one, you can alt click on a specific area of your photo. And so you can decide whether you wanna show this image again or not, or this dialog box that says, the spot healing brush automatically samples pixels to correct a spot in one step. To manually, to manually set the source, use the healing brush tool. You just press continue, and then you can use the, oh, we have to click on this down here. Okay, so now we would go ahead and alt click here, and we would be able to go ahead and use that to fix blemishes or whatever we were trying to fix. So let's go ahead there. Um, again, recompose the photo. We will talk about that in a later video. So here we can fix distortion. And this gives you a, um, an insight as to exactly what that is. And so again, we can go ahead and correct camera distortion. And my Photoshop Elements is freezing. Here we go. So we get this second menu here that pops up. So if we pull this this way, we can remove distortion that way, or we can add kind of like a fish eye lens, or yeah, a fish eye effect there. Um, here we can do vignetting, so we can add a vignette by pulling that to the left, or we can lighten the edges by pulling that to the right. And here we would decide the midpoint of that vignette or that lightening. And then here we've got our perspective warp tool, where we can kind of warp our picture to... Um, I like to use this to straighten lines and this grid is really nice here because that will help you to decide where exactly those lines are that you need to straighten. And so if I have a lot of lines going on in my picture and they look kind of skewed, a lot of times I will take this into um, this distortion panel here and I will go ahead and I will use this to fix the distortion on my photo. If you have a picture with a lot of gray in it, you can go ahead here and you can select a new background color um, for your grid lines, or you can take your grid away completely. Whatever helps you to be able to see it the most. When you're done, you can just go ahead and press OK, or if you don't like the effect, you can go ahead and press Cancel and you could try again, or you could um, decide to leave it alone. The next thing that we have here is called our perfect portrait um, panel here. So you can use this to transform your portrait with these simple steps to get an eye-catching flawless image. So here you can enhance the texture of your skin. So this is your skin smoothing. And so you have a smart blur. And so you can go over here and you can decide what your radius and your threshold will be. And by playing with these sliders, um, you can decide how much of this radius and threshold that you want to add. You don't want to over smooth, but at the same time you want to smooth enough that you are getting somewhat of an effect. And if I click on it, you can see that the effect is taken away. And when I let go, you can see that that's brought back. And then when you're happy with that, you could go ahead and click OK. So now you can use the Reveal Original to bring back the original image, image and use the Blur Brush to blur, um, the, to smooth the skin just where it's needed. So here's our Blur Brush and here's our Reveal Image. So we're going to go ahead and click 
um, reveal original and then we can use our blur brush to go in and smooth the skin just where we want to see that and we can use our bracket keys on our keyboard to make the brush bigger or smaller or you can come up here to this brush size and you can decide exactly how big or how small that you want your brush to be or the opacity. So here we can go ahead and we can increase our contrast of our picture just by going ahead and clicking on that button and then we can have all of these enhancement features. Um, we had the tooth whitening tool which we used in the first video. We can use the burn tool on eyelashes and eyebrows to darken them. You can use this um, by brushing them over the eyes, but you want to be careful because you don't want to use too much of that. You can use this on the red eye to remove red eye, which we will be talking about also in a later video since she doesn't have any red eye. And this is our spot healing, which we use on pimples, and we used that earlier on her wrist. And so now you down here you can add some special touches or you can slim your subject by cl clicking on that button. And so as you go down through here, you can see that we have all kinds of really interesting editing tools here. Now here we've got lighten or darken. So again, we can lighten the shadows or darken the highlights and do the midtone contrast, which we've seen a few times. Again, we have the brightness and the contrast. Um, here, again, we can enhance the colors like we did before. Here, we can go in and we can move a color cast. And it says a color cast in a photo can occur when dealing with various light sources. For example, a photo taken at sunset may have an orange cast while well, one taken under fluorescent light may have a green cast. Click on the part of an image that should be pure gray, white, or black using the tool below. And so you would decide where in your photo would be a neutral color. So let's try clicking here and it will kind of go through and auto white balance your photo to where it thinks that the white balance should be, which is actually a really handy tool. So maybe the whites of her eyes I could go by. I could try clicking around and you can just keep clicking until you get a look that you are happy with. And when you're done, you can just go ahead and click done or you could reset reset it or you could press cancel. Um, where did we go? Here, correct skin tone. You can kind of give her a little bit of a tan. You can add blusher which will affect the reds and ambient light here affects all of the colors by giving it a warm or a cool effect. Here we have a levels adjustment layer and we have kind of talked about the levels adjustment layer in the adjustment window in the layers window um, video tutorials. But you can read more about that here and you can also use this as a shortcut to create a new adjustment layer. And we can keep going down through here and you can see that we have got tons of these little guided tutorials. Um, we have depth of field where you can choose um, your depth of field and you can use this to add some blur. You can define your area of focus now, which could be right here on her face. And so that puts all of that back into focus. Um, you could increase your blur if you wanted to and add some more to the areas that are not in focus, or you can reset that here. Um, here you can draw lines, you can add a Lomo camera effect, an old-fashioned camera effect, an Orton camera effect, or a saturated slime slide film effect. So you can see here that all you would have to do for these effects is go ahead and click apply, or you can reset that. And that works the same with all of those different effects. 
Now here you just have some crazy photo effects that you probably won't use a lot of for normal editing, but it goes through and it gives you instructions on how to do all of that. Here you can use this to quickly composite photos. And down here you can use this for um, your action player. It allows you to select, select an action set and um, it can allow you to play these actions here that it has within itself. This is not the same as the actions over here in the full panel. These are the ones in the guided panel. It's their own special little actions. So there is a quick overview of the guided panel. And if you have any questions, really the guided panel answers it for you because it's very in-depth. It gives out some really great tutorials and I would encourage you to go ahead and take a look at that, especially if you're brand new to Photoshop Elements, that could be the solution that can help you really get in there and be able to use Photoshop Elements to its fullest until you feel confident enough to move over to the full panel. Um, once you understand Photoshop Elements and you have a really great feel for it, then you can feel free to move into the full panel or you can use these video tutorials to help you get in here to the full panel and really dig in and um, get down to the to the full customization. So thank you so much for watching this video tutorial. Happy editing!